Well, it's a pleasure to follow the Honourable Member for Christchurch. I don't agree with much of what he says, but I, I will say this in his favour. At least he's consistent with the arguments that he has made repeatedly in this place as to why he believes this is a bad deal and why he and I will be in the same lobby tonight, perhaps for some different reasons. But at least he, as I say, has been consistent. And indeed, much of what he says about this deal, I do agree with him for. And apparently now... Uh, Honourable members now decry that. It is quite bizarre, Mr Speaker, and forgive me, I'm repeating comments that I made um, only a few days ago, that honourable members think it is entirely proper and indeed honourable that they should be allowed to change their vote and to change their minds, but they deny the British people exactly the same right on this matter of Brexit. And I gently, uh, uh, the Honourable Gentleman for Spalding and the Deepest is one such Honourable, right honourable member who voted uh, against the Prime Minister's deal but now has voted for it and again he's going to go and vote for it tonight. Mr Speaker, in all the shameful shenanigans that have embraced Brexit, I think we've sunk to no amount to real debts, if I may say, today. And I, I want to explain why that is. It, it really isn't good enough for people to stand up and say as we have heard, that they are now going to vote for the deal, not because they think that it might actually be rather good for our country or rather good for our constituents, but because it will stop... Um, oh, I see, Mr Speaker, I've got your note. Um, I've got four minutes, but he's not listening, and I shall carry on. I will take an intervention, but not yet, because well, so I want to make this point. To say that you're, not going, to, you're going to now back the deal because it will stop an extension, even though the government's made it very clear that no more further extensions would be allowed, is, if I may say, perverse. To say you're now going to vote for the deal because it stops the European parliamentary elections, these aren't good reasons. Other honourable members opposite have said they'll vote for the Prime Minister's deal on the basis that the Prime Minister will stand down that isn't acting with honour. That isn't acting with principle. And whilst I will be voting with the right honourable lady, my friend, as she remains and always will for Witham, at least she has been true to her principles and she stands and she says she will not vote for this deal and she says quite rightly she will be held to account by her constituents and I congratulate her for that. We don't always agree and we don't agree on this but on many points we do agree as to why this withdrawal agreement is bad for our country and I pay tribute to the DUP. Mr Speaker, as individuals, I, oh, the honourable gentleman at the front decries that. He hasn't even let me finish my sentence. As a grouping, I have grave difficulties. As individuals, I find most of them pleasant. But at least the honourable, right honourable members who sit here have been consistent. And on this, I absolutely agree with them. This withdrawal agreement is a genuine threat to the Union of the United Kingdom. I genuinely do believe that. It's one of the reasons why I am in fear of this agreement. I believe it is a threat to Northern Ireland and its relationship as part of our United Kingdom. I believe the same is true in Scotland. I believe that Brexit will actually increase the desire of the Scottish people to break away from the Union and strike out by themselves because they will see a future as a member of the European Union being denied because of Brexit as a member of the United Kingdom and in Wales too, where we know that the number of Remain voters <coughs> continues now to grow. Mr Speaker. I agree with the comments of the Right Honourable Learned Gentleman for Beaconsfield, Leicester West, the Honourable Lady, and indeed for Lees East, when they talk about how this particular motion will actually make the certainty that British businesses are crying out for even less achievable because of the division between the political declaration and the withdrawal agreement. And it is so regrettable, given that we've started finally on a process of indicative vote, something that, as you know, many of us, Mr Speaker, were crying out for at the beginning of this process to bring unity, to bring the 48, the 52 per cent together to form a consensus. But we are beginning, we have begun that process, and we are making good progress in it, and I think there will be some good, reasonable outcomes which will heal the divide and take us forward in the way that we need to. But, Mr Speaker, I finish by saying this. What sort of country have we become post the referendum. Are we a better country? Are we a happier country? 
Are we a more united country? Or is the absolute reality of it that we are not just as divided as we were in June 26, but even more divided? And change will come because change has to come, because British politics is broken. And, Mr Speaker, we're seeing that change. I've left the Conservative Party with two others. I think more will follow. I think we will see the breakup of the two parties. And I'm delighted today that the group that I've joined with members from formerly of the Labour Party will has now today formed itself into a new political party that will change the face and direction of British politics. That's why we call ourselves Change.org. And I believe that is what the British people are crying out for. Leadership, honesty, integrity and a new way of doing politics. That's the only good thing that will come out of the Brexit chaos. Thank you. Uh,